Hello everyone. Today I would like to continue discussing the zeroth law in the context of black body radiation. The basics were presented in these videos, but the zeroth law can teach us more about heat transfer between objects and about what happens within cavities. Again, it helps us to understand why Kirchhoff's law cannot be correct. The concept of thermal equilibrium had allowed us to define temperature as an intensive property of a system. Now we extend these ideas to help illustrate how thermal equilibrium can be reached in the first place. To begin, objects reach thermal equilibrium in three ways, conduction, radiation, and convection. Once reached, thermal equilibrium implies that each of these three processes has ceased. For example, an object floating in space which emits light energy exactly equal to the amount absorbed would be in thermal equilibrium. So let's look at the zeroth law in the context of a black body, a six-sided box with perfectly absorbing walls. Then we surround the box with a rigid adiabatic boundary so that the system of interest is only the black body and its contents. We place an object on the floor inside the cavity. We also assume that the cavity is initially at a higher temperature than the object and neglect any radiation. Thermal equilibrium could still be reached between the two objects using thermal conduction since they are touching. Eventually we could move the object away from the floor and check with the thermometer that the object has the same temperature as the cavity walls. Or imagine the object floating in the center, not touching the cavity walls. Again, the object starts at a lower temperature than the cavity. If both the cavity and the object emit radiation appropriate to their temperature, the object will reach the same temperature as the cavity using only photons. When equilibrium is reached, we shall make a small hole through the cavity and the adiabatic wall and see that the cavity was filled with radiation. This radiation would be characteristic of the common temperature of the cavity and the object. We would also find that the amount and the frequency of the photons coming off of the surface of the cavity walls and of the object would be the same for each unit area, even if the cavity and the objects were made of very different materials. How could this be? We previously covered that a cavity wall made from a perfect absorber emits according to the Planck function for any temperature. However, what about the object? What if it has only one-tenth of the emissivity of a black body? Would it still have the same amount of photons coming off its surface when in thermal equilibrium with the cavity? The number of photons coming off of unit surface of the object would include those it emitted itself. In addition, one would have to include those photons which though initially emitted by the cavity walls are now being reflected by the surface of the object. Finally, if the object was translucent, it would have to allow some of the photons originating at the cavity wall to be transmitted through the object. As a result, no matter what surface we examine inside a cavity, the amount of photons leaving that surface will always be the same. We will demonstrate this experimentally in an upcoming video. In order to understand the effect of introducing an arbitrary object, it is best to begin with a perfect reflector. Real materials which act as near-perfect reflectors are best understood by invoking idealized silver, where all of the energy defining the temperature is contained in the walls of the material and enters into the conduction bands. We used this concept before in these two videos and came to understand that the presence of a perfect reflector inside a cavity leads to the formation of a gray body. It is also clear that if one considers the behavior of real matter in this case, that the radiation coming off of the cavity will not be black, but gray. It will be reduced at every frequency by a certain amount corresponding to the extent which energy becomes unavailable for emission. That energy is trapped in the walls of our object. As such, the existence of gray bodies is a direct manifestation that the zeroth law of thermodynamics exists. That is why any attempt to imply that all cavities are black and independent of the nature of the walls constitutes a dismissal of how energy becomes distributed in real materials and is an attack on the zeroth law of thermodynamics. This also explains why laboratory black bodies are not made of arbitrary materials 
as Kirchhoff's law should have allowed, but rather from optimally absorbing surfaces. This once again demonstrates that Kirchhoff's law is false. It remains true that gray bodies can be heated and driven away from thermal equilibrium such that they can eventually become filled with black body radiation at elevated temperatures. But that involves non-equilibrium, which is not the subject of Kirchhoff's law. The last way to reach thermal equilibrium is with thermal convection. For now, ignore thermal radiation and thermal conduction. Then, let's switch our object to a low temperature assembly of helium atoms bouncing around in our cavity. At the beginning, the average velocity of our atoms will be very slow. As they come into contact with the hotter cavity walls, the gas atoms will take away some of the heat from the walls and begin to move faster. Eventually, the average velocity of the gas will no longer increase. At that point, once again, we have thermal equilibrium. Now imagine the cavity and the gas now in thermal equilibrium with the former emitting photons. If only thermal processes were allowed, we could discover once again that these photons would be characterized by the radiation at the equilibrium temperature for both the cavity and the gas atoms. However, the radiation would not be truly black in this case. It would be gray and it would be reduced at every frequency slightly from the black body result. This is because some of the energy of this system is now contained in the translational motion of the gas atoms and is unavailable for the walls for emission. This is one reason why black body calibration is often done under vacuum at the National Institutes of Standards and Technology. Once again, the zeroth law of thermodynamics governs this situation and the use of a vacuum establishes that Kirchhoff's law is false. So how does an object choose whether it uses radiation, conduction, or convection to reach thermal equilibrium? As a rule, the path which is simplest will always dominate. A good rule of thumb is that conduction typically increases linearly with temperature in solids. The greater the temperature, the more the conduction. Eventually though, conduction will begin to decrease. Why? because a solid is unable to support increased atomic vibrations and can no longer properly handle internal heat transfer. Internal bonds will begin to break and the solid will eventually melt. You can learn more about all this in this paper, which is once again linked below. In any case, liquids and gases do not have as good of access to thermal conduction. They often prefer to use convection rather than radiation or conduction in order to deal with heat transfer. For radiation, we know that black bodies emit light depending on the fourth power of their temperature according to Stefan's law. The higher the temperature, the more the radiation. Metals though never follow this rule, and neither do gases. In fact, it is well known that gases can decrease the radiation with temperature as you can learn in my paper on the little heat engine. Since Stefan's law, Wien's law, and Planck's law only have terms for radiation, they don't give reliable answers in the presence of conduction or convection. They are only true if the object can be treated as a black body, and this implies that a solid was used. Note also that black bodies can do work. Along these lines, it is also interesting to consider what happens within a perfectly reflecting cavity. When the cavity is completely closed, it must be devoid of all radiation. The energy of the system must be solely governed by the walls in order to honor the zeroth law. When the cavity is open, it will contain radiation which was pumped into it from the surroundings. That radiation can even produce standing waves in the cavity, and such radiation is never black. Furthermore, the radiation properly belongs to the surroundings, not the cavity, as the later has no ability to do work on the radiation. Again, Kirchhoff's law is proven false as the space inside a perfect reflector is associated with the surroundings, not with the system. We provide experimental evidence of this shortly in the infrared, but ample evidence already exists in microwave cavities used in telecommunications and in resonators used in my own field of ultra-high field MRI. Lastly, I'd like to mention that objects reach internal thermal equilibrium exclusively with conduction and convection. Within an object, vibrational modes called phonons exist. Electronic conduction bands may also be present. 
Using these, along with convection in liquids and gases, objects can transfer heat internally. Radiation is reserved for reaching thermal equilibrium with the surroundings of an object. In closing, I hope that you enjoyed this video on reaching thermal equilibrium in light of the zeroth law. If you did, hit that like button. In addition, subscribe if you'd like to look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.